This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Professor Mark McCarthy tells us how genomics helps us understand diabetes. Hello, Mark. Hello. People in Britain love to draw and research their family trees. Can this help us to understand complicated diseases like diabetes? Yes, uh, having a good family history in the medical record is a very important part of what we do as doctors. Um, in the context of diabetes, it can tell us quite a lot about an individual's risk of getting diabetes in the future, tell us something about the complications they might get if they get the disease. It can tell us something about the type of diabetes they might get as well, and uh, in particular in some uh, rarer types of diabetes, it can be very informative in terms of uh, understanding whether they have one of these uh, rare and more familial forms of, of diabetes or obesity, for example. Having said that, it's not doesn't tell us everything. Diabetes and obesity are diseases that involve both genes and environment. And also, if you think about type 2 diabetes, it's a disease that comes on late in life. It's often not diagnosed very well. So an absence of a family history of diabetes doesn't necessarily mean that you're immune. It could just be that uh, the diagnosis was not made in a parent before they uh, became ill with something else. And can you tell us about the genetic basis of diabetes and obesity? Well, both these diseases have a very strong tendency to cluster in families, and that's clearly a clue that, that genes are important. Uh, in fact, if you do uh, rather sophisticated measures to try and tease apart genes and environment or nature and nurture, you find that a very high proportion of the risk of either of these conditions is actually in, in our genes. And that may come as something of a surprise, of course, for diseases that we know are also heavily influenced by lifestyle and, and, and other exposures in the environment. I think it just goes to show that for both diabetes and obesity, one's risk of disease is really a very complex mix of both nature uh, and, uh, and nurture. Uh, over the last few years, we've really been able to pin down a lot more uh, in detail about the basis of these diseases. For example, we know that in uh, common forms of type 2 diabetes, there are over at least 70 uh, positions in the, in the genome and the DNA sequence that seem to be playing a role in risk of type 2 diabetes in an individual, and we're starting to use that information to understand the disease a little better. And can this research help us treat patients with type 2 diabetes? Yes, I think in, in two main ways. Uh, one is that through genetics we can gain a much clearer understanding of disease, how it comes about, what the mechanisms are that normally regulate mm. blood glucose in an individual and, and what happens when those go wrong. Uh, and that really provides a, a rational basis for thinking about new ways of treating and preventing disease. So we can try and identify what the processes are that go wrong and then think about ways in which we can intervene to make them, them better. The second hope is, is that we might be able to use uh, knowledge of an individual's uh, genetic makeup, uh, so-called personalized medicine, to, to understand the type of disease that particularly affects them uh, and what medication they might particularly benefit from and in, in order to be able to target the available ways of treating or preventing disease uh, to an individual in a much more effective way than we do at present where it's essentially trial and error. And what's the most important lines of research that have developed over the past five or ten years? Uh, there have been many, but in, in my field, thinking about the genetics of these diseases, what we've really been able to do over the last five or ten years is instead of just focusing on one or two points in the DNA sequence, to really look at the whole sequence from top to toe uh, and chart the, the differences between individuals that alter their risk of uh, diabetes and obesity. We've also been able to tie that into a much better understanding of the inner workings of some of the organs and cells that are relevant to these diseases. In the case of diabetes, for example, the pancreatic islet, fat, liver, uh, and, and muscle. Uh, I really think that over the next decade, we, we, we stand poised, really, to be able to make major advances, to bring that genetics and that biology together in a way that really charts the um, the basis of this, of this disease and, and gives us a very solid platform for finding better ways of treating and preventing it. So why does your research matter? Why should we put money into it? 
Well, there's no doubt that diabetes and obesity are, are major challenges for, for, for global health care. Um, more than one in ten people on the planet at the moment either has diabetes or will develop it during their lifetime. If you count up the health, social, economic costs of diabetes projected over the next uh, 40 or 50 years, you get some astronomical figures in the trillions and, and, and tens of trillions of dollars. Um, and those are going to fall disproportionately, actually, on societies which are probably least able to cope. It may come as some of a something of a surprise, then, that, that despite all of that importance, we still don't understand this disease well. We're still manifestly not very good at preventing it or, or treating it. And genetics is perhaps one of the more powerful tools that we've got uh, to be able to deliver uh, a systematic understanding of this disease. What causes it? How does it come about? How can we intervene? to prevent it and to treat it. And how does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? I've talked a lot about the ways in which we're using these new tools to uh, discover a lot more about uh, diabetes, um, but that's really a prelude to being able to translate it, to, to, to find ways to actually mitigate the, the, the impact of, of these diseases. And we're already working with pharma and other partners to to find ways to take these discoveries, to use them to identify new drugs, to target uh, drugs in a more effective way. And another approach that we think has a lot of promise is to use genetics as a clue uh, to identifying what are called biomarkers, not necessarily genetic differences, but things we can measure in the blood, proteins and so on that can be measured on a simple blood test that uh, provide uh, markers of disease subtype, progression and so on that can be very clinically useful in helping to identify which individuals would benefit from which uh, treatment. And just to give you one example of that, we used some very basic genetic discoveries to uh, get a clue uh, that individuals with a particular rare subtype of diabetes called MODI might be, have relatively low levels of a protein circulating in the blood called uh, C-reactive protein. And we were able to demonstrate that this was indeed the case, that our hypothesis was was confirmed uh, uh, looking in patients with this disease. And this test is now something that's going to be very useful in the clinic when we see somebody with early onset uh, diabetes to identify those who are very likely to have this subtype to make sure that they get the right tests to confirm whether they do or do not have this subtype of diabetes and then to ensure that they're put on the right treatment, which is actually a different treatment to what we might place uh, other people with early onset diabetes on. So I think that's one nice example of how we can take genetic findings and uh, move them through to translation into the clinic in, in fairly short order. Thank you, Mark.